How are you doing? This is Diamond Dave, also known as David Williams, the founder of the highest paid part-time job options training program. And what we're really quickly going to talk about today uh, is something that's going to be, you know, like a kind of like a timely situation, kind of a, a current, I wouldn't say a current event, but something that is kind of recently happened. And I'm going to kind of talk about a lot of things in one video, but I'm going to try to give you a kind of understanding of where I believe the world is going and what you kind of need to do to position yourself to be successful. We're going to use something that, uh, that is a current event and we're going to implement that into this particular discussion. Right. And what happened, I want to say a few days ago, maybe kind of based on when you're hearing this particular audio is I posted something on social media and I said that, you know, the whole red pill community is about getting men to accept that making $40,000 a year is all right. Okay. And however, the world should still treat you like a VIP. And a woman that I'm connected to on social media, she posted that on one of her community walls on her social platform. And what was interesting was the response back to that particular post from a lot of different people that I presume to also be uh, males. And what was very interesting is that as the discussion started to unfold, Many people that were in opposition to what I had proclaimed, they didn't create any kind of argument against what I said. What they now sought out to do was come after me on a personal level. So they didn't say, well, you know what? This particular community that we're calling Red Pill is not about men making $40,000 a year and being fine with it, but still desiring to be a VIP. They never said that it became an attack on what I have on my YouTube page, the kind of courses I have, because they don't understand how to actually what, you know, they say in law, you're supposed to either def you're supposed to either defend the law or defend the facts of the case or prosecute the law, or prosecute the facts of the case. They couldn't do either of those things. They couldn't say, well, you know what? That is actually incorrect. And here's what is actually what it's about or you know, this is really what this whole red pill community is about. It became about me personally. And so that's what I knew. They didn't have a leg to stand on. You understand me? And we're going to talk about that because I still believe, and I'm a, I'm a repeat myself. I believe that this whole red pill thing for the most part is getting men to accept that they are at a lower level from an income standpoint, getting them to accept that, to be fine with it. And then getting them to also believe that women who they believe are in the same, what I would call socioeconomic status as them should be, should be content with the money that they make. Right. And not have any desires to see them exceed at a higher level. And that's really what it's about. Okay. And we're going to kind of go into that and we're going to explore that. And we're going to explore some of the implications of that because this is, there's two kinds of people that are going to listen to this audio. You got people that are committed to this mediocrity. And we're going to talk about where that's really coming from. They're committed to this spirit of being average. They're committed to it, right? They're very dedicated to it. So what I'm saying to them is only going to do one. That particular spirit of average and being mediocre is going to essentially tell them that this guy is attacking you as a person. He's attacking us because they believe that spirit is them because they've heard that voice in their head so long. They think that voice is their voice. And what it's going to do is cause them to get angry and they're going to lash out at me. They're going to come into my page. They're going to make all kind of crazy posts because that spirit of averageness, that spirit of mediocrity that is inside them, that is communicating to them all the time, that it's all right being mediocre. It's all right being average. That's a badge of honor amongst yourself, right? It's all right. It's going to say, well, you know what? Something's wrong with him because he's challenging us about where we're at in life right now. And it's going to continue to do that. So that's the first person that's going to hear that. So I already know what their response is going to be because I've already understood what kind of spirit that they're dealing with. The second person is a person that has not yet fallen into this particular type of, of ideology, right? Or this group think. And I want you to really understand where they're taking this thing, right? Where this ideology and this group think is going to lead in the future, right? I want you to really understand that. So let's go ahead and get into it. 
all of this stuff, this red pill, purple pill, blue pill, you know, uh, fuchsia pill, you know, orange sherbet pill, all this pill stuff is really, really like way out to me. Right. Do you have these guys have designated, they've self segregated themselves amongst these pills and then they have these, you know, here's these attributes of the person that is behind this particular type of pill and here's how they are. And they have this really deep philosophy and ideology around how you break down amongst what pill that they think that you've taken. Not, not that you said about yourself that they think that you've taken, right? And what is interesting about this particular group of people is that they never talk about this whole group, this movement, this ideology being about being a man. I'm going to repeat myself. They never talk about this ideology, this way of thinking, being about transforming yourself, right, from a young male or a male into a man. Man is nowhere in any of this stuff. See, I come from the understanding that you got to be a man first before you anything else. Right. So before you red pill, blue pill, you, you know, you GD, you BD, you a Damu, you a Crip, you feel me? You a Latin King, you a Nieta, before you any of that, before you a Skull and Bones, before you a member of a frat, you feel me? Before you a member of the United States military, before you a six figure earner, right? Before you a seven figure earner, before you a eight figure earner. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Before you a member of a religion, you a Christian, you a Muslim, you a Buddhist. You understand me? Before you spiritual, you got to be a man first. You have to be a man. That has to be the foundation of what you're doing. You got to be a man. And they got to be principles of men. But see, this is the this is the the uh, uh, challenging thing about that. Manhood historically over the eons of time is an a uh, a validation that is given to you amongst other men in your group. So you normally have to show to those men in your group that you are a man, right? That's what you have to do. And then they designate you as a man and then you're a man amongst the men in your group. So amongst another group, they may not feel like you a man because you haven't done what they felt like you needed to do. But amongst your group, you a man, okay? We've totally eliminated that from society. So everybody's chasing these titles and designations to try to figure out how to identify themselves. But they never had to go to the men in their group and figure out what do I have to do to be seen as a man amongst the men of my group? Because we've totally fragmented all of that in our society. So everybody got this new designation and you're not a man first. You're not a man. And that's why when you deal with people that have been validated by the men of their group as a man, and they deal with these people. It, it don't make no sense. I'm talking to these guys on the internet. It's like I'm talking to a child. These are not children that I'm dealing with. These are adult males. But their communication pattern is of a seven or eight year old. Because nobody has ever made them conduct themselves like a man. See, you can exist in this society and not be a man. You can go to work every day. You can make the certain amount of money that you feel is cool as an average person. Right? Because you're not an average man, you're an average male. You're not a man because you have not been approved and validated and shown to be a man amongst the men of your group. You're not a man. And you're looking for something to root your masculinity in, right? You're looking for something to prove your masculinity, to be the foundation of your masculinity. And it becomes all these particular identifications instead of trying to figure out what do I need to do to be validated as a man amongst the people in my group? And I don't mean a bunch of people on the internet. See that, that, you know, for literally millions of years, you did not get your validation from a man by a bunch of people on the internet. The internet's not millions of years old. So what we're doing now is something that is very abnormal in human behavior. Where we have human beings looking to get their masculinity affirmed and approved by a bunch of people on the internet platform well, literally for millions of years, the only way you could be seen as a man amongst the men of your group was in the real world. So this is why you have all this abnormal behavior, because literally you're going against millions of years of programming, especially for people that have, have a, of, a, are of a direct African origin. Right. You're going against millions of years of DNA programming, literally millions 
by jumping on the internet and trying to get validated as a man on the internet. This doesn't even make any sense. And this is why you have all this abnormal behavior because your brain doesn't understand how to process this. So it creates more psychosis. It creates more neurotic behavior. And you have a lot of people that have figured out how to monetize this neurotic behavior. And that's something I do teach in my dark persuasion class. I say, if you got an audience of people and you understand that they have a neurosis, your job is to try to figure out how to monetize and how to use that neurosis to your favor. So I understand exactly what they're doing. Right. And that's why you got two groups of people. You got a group of people that are going to listen to this. They're going to double down on it because that spirit of being average, that spirit of mediocrity is going to start to communicate to them and say, you know what? There's something wrong with this guy because he's challenging us on this particular level. So for the person that has not yet fallen into these rabbit holes, you really need to understand where this thing is taking you. So the first thing is what? They never talk about being a man. They talk about the average man, but they don't talk about being a man. They're not the average man. They're the average male. These are not men because when you talk to them, at least on my standard of being a man, I don't understand where y'all are coming from. I have members of my family that are teenagers that are not men yet. They're teenage males that understand how to communicate better than a lot of these people. Why? Because the men in our family made sure they understood how to communicate better than that. You're not going to go around here talking to people like that and you representing us. That's a no, no. That's not going to happen. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? These are grown people that I'm dealing with and they communicate like seven or eight year olds. And but they think an average woman and a woman not accepting that she's just as average as them is a solution to their problem. That's not even where it starts. It's not even where it starts. Right. So that's the first thing. What I want you to understand is that and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and say this now so I won't forget about talking about it. I know a brother, good guy, in my opinion, a man, in my opinion has actually done work in the real world, in his community, in his area, to help his group. Has done a lot of things to help his group. Now, he's pro-man, he's also pro-black man, right? I told him probably about a year, half ago, two years ago, man, get out of these communities, man. Stop associating with these people. That's, that's my counsel to you. Now, I'm not telling you that if you don't do it, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not saying that. I'm not making an ultimatum. But my counsel to you is get away from these people. Why? Because you got a real business in the real world. You're doing things in the real world. You have real networks in the real world. And none of these people that you're dealing with on these online platforms where they get on these platforms for two and three hours and talk about women all the time and feminism and yada, yada, yada. None of these people can help you in anything that you got going on. They can't do any business with you because they got to have a business to do business with him. They can't bring anybody to you to do business with you because they don't have the network. They're not accomplished in any area, right? So you just spinning your wheels with these guys. You're not going to get anything from that. Leave these guys alone, man. Just leave them alone. And that was my counsel to him because in my opinion, he was doing too much good work in the real world to get caught up on this internet stuff because it's not going to add up to nothing at the end of the day. And we're going to kind of talk about that later in this video, right? This is a, this is a internet thing. And like I said before, is that the reason why you get so much abnormal and erratic behavior out of the members of this particular community, because never in the history of human behavior have males tried to get their masculinity validated and try to find a manhood on a computer platform. This is supposed to be done in the real world amongst the men of your group. So you, by jumping on the internet, you already went wrong. You already went wrong. And so that's causing a lot of confusion in your brain because your brain has millions of years of memories of how this is supposed to be done. And it doesn't even understand what you're doing because what you're doing is very, very abnormal. But because you are so apprehensive about going out into the real world and dealing with people in the real world, you think the internet is a way to avoid your fear, right? Because most people avoid what they want before they go to what they don't want. So you are so worried about things not going the way that you want to go in the real world. You jump on the internet and you don't realize that your behavior is a byproduct of what you're doing. Your behavior is not going to get better and your situation is not going to get better till you stop what you're doing. But you double down on what you're doing. Why? Because you got them spirits talking to you. And like I told you before, that spirit's been talking to you so long, you think that's your own voice. But you're not ready for that. So we're not even going to go into it. 
Here's something else I heard out of these communities, right? It's a guy. They got a business. I'm not down in their business. They have a right to be in business. They have a right to sell whatever products or services they can sell to the market. If the market is buying it, then the market desires it because they understand that they're milking a cow of a bunch of people that are looking for something. They understand that. And one of the things that they're telling these dudes, right, is that you need to go have sex with a certain amount of women to learn the women, right? Let me explain something to you. Because I know a lot of y'all dudes that are in these communities, you've never really dealt with a lot of women. And you think that's the problem in your life. So you think your problem is you haven't dealt with a lot of women. So then therefore you don't understand. And they use this term called, you know, you don't understand female nature. And they use the term female and woman interchangeably. That's not true. A 12 year old is a female. That's not a woman. A five year old is female has to do with biological sex. So there's no such thing as female nature. There's the way women act. And if you dealt with a, enough women, what you would understand is that women pretty much are the same no matter where you go. But you haven't dealt with enough women to know that. And when I say deal with a lot of women, I don't mean you have sex with a whole bunch of women. We live in an era with like it's so many STDs out here. And you think the way to solve your problem is to expose yourself to all those STDs, because even with a condom on, you can get STDs. So you think the solution to your challenges in the dating world is to have sex with a whole bunch of women to expose yourself to a bunch of STDs. And then that's how you're going to learn women. But let me ask you a question. How do you learn about women from having sex with them? Because you can just meet somebody and go have sex with them. So how did you learn about the person? The way you learn about women is to not have sex with them. That's how you're going to find out what kind of person you're really dealing with. Don't have sex with them. But see, you think your problem is you're not having enough sex. Because you think that's what's going to make you a man. Because you're looking for your manhood on the internet. See what I'm saying? So one of the things in which I was blessed with is the men in my family never made me to believe that I'm a man because I'm having sex with a whole bunch of women. They never made me believe that. They never made me believe that I'm a man because I got a bunch of women I'm dealing with. Right? So to me, I don't trip on chicks because I never been hurting for them. And I don't believe I got to have a whole bunch of them to be seen as a man because the men around me never put that idea in front of my head. And I'm talking about in the real world. So I didn't have to jump on the internet to try to figure out how I can be successful with women. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? The way you learn about women is you deal with them without having sex with them. That's how you're going to find out exactly what kind of woman you're dealing with. You're not going to learn about a woman by having sex with a woman because how do you learn what kind of person you're dealing with just by having sex with them? Because you can meet somebody and go have sex with them. So how did you learn about that person? And you're exposing yourself to a lot of STDs. But see, they know the people that are creating these type of courses and content, they know that you're sexually frustrated. You think your problem is that you're not having enough sex because you bought the lie of this particular society which is primarily a, a society designed to produce tricks. So you think your problem is you're not tricking enough. You a frustrated trick. You only can trick at a certain level because you only got a certain amount of money. And you think, well, my problem is two. You think you got two problems. This is the problem. This is what the red pill guys think is a real problem. We're going to get down to the meat of the issue. We're going to boil it all down. This is what they, they believe their problem is. I want to trick more because I'm sexually frustrated. I believe I'm not having enough sex. Right. Because really, my ideal world is I lay up in one of those big California king beds with a room full of women and I just have sex all day like it's a Roman orgy. That's in their world in their mind. That's their ideal state. Right. Because they think that's going to, you know, I guess, bring it to some level of enlightenment or transcendence or whatever you want to call it. So that's really what they want to be. So the fact that they may be having sex uh, or not enough sex, they think that's their problem. Right. So then they believe that, well, I need to learn how to have sex with more women. You understand me? So then they buy this content that they think is going to teach them how to have sex with more women. But the problem is they can't afford the lead ups. Right. When I say the lead ups, I mean, they can't afford to date. They can't afford a lot of times to travel. A lot of times they can't afford to go out to, to social events because one, they're not bringing in enough money. But they don't believe the bringing in enough money is a problem. They believe the problem is the women just won't accept that I'm not bringing in enough money. They won't accept that. So if I can just get the women to accept that I'm not bringing in enough money and just go have sex with me, my whole world will work out all right. Because then I can get to this number of women that I've had sex with that's going to allow me now to really understand women. 
right? This is this is their thesis. This is their rationale. And the real issue is one. You're a frustrated trick. You're frustrated because you believe that if I could just have more sex, right? Everything will work out all right. And really what you're frustrated at is that the women that you want to have sex with are having sex with other men. And that's really your frustration because you fixated on specific women. And you believe that, well, maybe if I go and get this understanding, I can maybe one day have sex with this other group of women who I really want to have sex with. If I can just learn these dating skills and I can learn, you know, these one liners and all this other stuff, which don't have nothing to do with nothing. Because you're a bunch of frustrated tricks. Because I told you this before. Most men, if they win lotto, they become the trick that they always wanted to be. They hit Powerball, they'll become the trick that they always wanted to be. Because really, they just want to be a trick. They want to just go to Vegas and lay up in a hotel room with a whole bunch of hookers and just have a whole bunch of sex. They think that's, the, they think that's like the epitome of life. And they're frustrated that they can't live that life, but they think other men are also living that life. Because, you know, we had Ty Lopez be, 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 be real big on this internet. And what did he sold them? He sold them an elite trick lifestyle. I'm this guy who makes a lot of money. I'm doing private planes. I'm jumping in limos. And I'm surrounded by all these hookers. And a lot of y'all want to be surrounded by a bunch of hookers. And you don't understand because you don't have enough exposure in the real world because you won't go outside. Is that... When you're surrounded by a bunch of women and everything about your relationship with them is transactional. What do you think you're going to get out of that? You're surrounded by a bunch of hookers. They're only there because you're paying them. This lie that you're going to have all these women that are going to be around you because they like you on some level. It's false. So you got a bunch of women around you and you got to keep coming out of the pocket to keep those women around you. You got to keep coming out of your pocket because they're only there because of the transaction. And you think that's the kind of life you want to live. It don't like, but this has been promoted to y'all on the internet. And unfortunately for a lot of y'all, the men around you that you were raised with have not taught you that that's not a, a way in which you want to conduct yourself. You're not going to get no points with us for conducting myself. The men that raised me, I would not get any points from them by having 30 women around me all the time. I would have to pull them to the side and say, hey, you know what? That's just marketing. I'm just marketing on the Internet. That's not real life. OK, cool. I understand. But if I was actually living that lifestyle, well, I got 30 women around me everywhere I go that are hookers. These chicks are prostitutes. They wouldn't be like, oh, man, David, you really doing it. You got a whole bunch of girls. They were like, this dude is a weirdo. What is this dude doing with all these hookers around him? And you ain't checking nothing. You got 30 hookers around you, but you ain't checking nothing. You're a weirdo. But you're really a trick. So I come from a whole different type of game. Well, that's weird to me. But I understand that a lot of y'all was raised to be tricks. So you want to be an elite trick. Dan Blazarian, the poker player, did the same thing. Jumped on the internet every time he interviews, he got all these women around him. Chicks is hookers. He paying for all of that. But y'all think that's cool that he can pay all these women to hang around him. Right? Because he don't have nothing appealing to those women outside of that cash exchange. But to y'all, that's the epitome. That's why I want to live. That's why life I want to live. And to me, that's not how you want to live. Because like I said, you got 30 women around you. You ain't checking nothing out of these women. They hookers, they prostitutes. They catching dates all the time. You ain't checking nothing. But you, that's how you want to live. That's weird to me. But that's weird to me. Right? Because I was raised different. So that's what I'm trying to get y'all to understand is that this is where all this stuff is going. Having sex with all them women is just going to be an easy way for you to get an STD. You're not going to learn about women that way. Right. And you're still going to be average income wise. So you're going to learn all this game, which is not game, because trying to figure out how to set, have sex with a woman is not game. There's no game to that. Lying to have sex with a woman. There's no game to that. That's not game. That's lying to have sex with a woman. But these pickup artists communities who don't know what game is have taken the word game and make that mean how you're going to lie to a woman, how you're going to misrepresent yourself to a woman, right? Just so you can have sex with her. You doing all that to have a hard 15 minutes. That's what you're doing all that for. You going through all that to spend 15 minutes with the chick. That's what you're doing all that for. Y'all flying across the country, paying fees, right? Uh, paying transaction fees, 
on your banking to go to Colombia to have sex with a prostitute for 15 minutes. That's what you're doing? It's worth all that to say you was with a Colombian chick. I mean, y'all is really like y'all are way out there, man, and y'all don't even realize it. And these people have figured this out about y'all and they figured out how to corral y'all and they figured out how to milk y'all like a cow till this thing is over. And we're going to kind of talk about where this thing is going. But somebody really needs to ask y'all this stuff. How does this make sense to you? Right? Buy a course to learn how to lie to women, to learn how to misrepresent yourself on social media just so you can have sex with the chick. Let me explain to you what you're doing. The woman knows you're lying to her first. When you go to Colombia or go to these other countries, go to Dominican Republic, right? Uh, go to Eastern Europe, go to Asia to be with these women. These women know you ain't got nothing going on. Why? Because you here. Y'all don't realize that you're not over there to do business. You over there to trick off. So what do they know about you? You ain't got nothing going on where you at. Why? Because you showed up here and they know you coming from America. So you don't left millions of women in America to come to where they at just because you can't get nothing popping over there in your own land. Right. They know that about you that they may entertain you, but these women are not stupid because you're not the first dude that showed up over there for that same reason. You understand what I'm trying to tell you. So this is the play to do all this just to have sex. And let me tell you what you're doing to this woman. You're creating an idea in her head that what she has, which is her vagina and access to her vagina, because you're not over there because you like the woman. You're not over there because you think she's going to improve your life. You're not lying to this woman on social media or running this quote unquote game on social media because you actually want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, insert this woman into something that you have going on. That's going to be beneficial to both of y'all. You just want access to her vagina. So what you're telling her is that her vagina is so great. And what you have to offer in real life is so low. I have to lie to get access to it. And you wonder why you having a problem with these women. You like a person that has spoiled a child. And then when a the child become a teenager, they start cursing you out and telling you what you can do and yada, yada, yada. And you wondering, well, why this person treat me like this? Because you spoiled them as a child. You never got them right as a child. So of course, when they become a teenager and they become older, they're going to just straight disrespect you. Why? Because you never got them right from the gate. You frame the relationship wrong from the start. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? You frame the relate. You never put boundaries around the child from the start. So then when they get older, you wonder why they're not going to live. They're not going to do nothing you tell them to do because you framed it wrong from the gate. When you come in from the gate, lying to that woman just to have sex with her. And she know you lying to her. These chicks are not stupid. You, you doing all kind of weird stuff to try to figure out how to have sex with her. You know what you're telling her? That access to her vagina is more important than your word. It's more important than your manhood. And then you wonder why she don't respect you. You created the disrespect. You don't even realize that. You created it. Then when the disrespect turn around and come to you, you start talking about this is female nature. Well, this is how the modern woman acts. No, you created that disrespect in that woman. You did that. And you as a, see, if you was a man, you could accept that you did that and then understand, look here, I, know, I need to stop doing that because as a man, I'm creating this environment. I'm creating the environment and then I'm putting the woman into this environment that I'm created. I created the conditions of the environment. And then when she conducts herself accordingly to the environment and the conditions of the environment that I created, I'm getting mad at her when I did everything. Keep telling you, if you are in a leadership position and it go wrong, it's your fault. It's not, it's not the people that's following you. So if you're leading the woman and you don't act, you don't like the way she's acting, ask yourself, why your leadership led her to that position. But see, that means being a man and you don't want that. So what's funny is how the woman is supposed to be accountable, but you're not because you're not a man or you're the average man. Really, you're the average male who's not accountable. See, so the average male is not accountable for what happens, right? The man is accountable for what happens because he's in a leadership position. So if it go wrong, he got to look at himself first before he start looking at everybody else. So many of these dudes are upset at the way women conduct themselves without realizing they're creating that in that woman by what they're doing. And I can't say what it is on the end because I don't want to get this page banned, but it's a certain word we used to call where I'm coming from. And you're creating this in this woman by the way in which you're treating her. 
because you lying to her, you deceiving her, you jumping through all these hoops, right? And she knows it to get sex with the woman. And then you wonder why she don't respect you. You created the disrespect, but you want to, you, but you believe you got to have sex with all these women by any means necessary for you to learn quote unquote female nature, right? There's no such thing as female nature. When a female is born, she's a female. You don't understand women. But the first thing you don't understand is how to be a man. And these dudes aren't teaching you that because you don't want to learn how to be a man. You just want to learn how to be a better trick for low budget. That's your real desire. It all boils down to the fact that y'all want to know how to be a better trick on a lower budget. Right? I want to learn how to trick under less than 40 grand a year. I want to learn how to trick with really, really good looking woman, a woman I desire to be with on less than $40,000 a year. So now here's how you lie on social media. Here's how you make it look on social media that you got something going on, even though you really don't have nothing going on, because if you got something going on, you ain't got to make it look like, on, like, like that on social media. People in the real world will know you got something going on. If you got, you think, you think somebody that got something going on in the real world, got to try to make it look like they got something going on on social media. They actually have something going on and people know about it. And let me tell you something, women know about it because women talk. So if you got something, if you are on your job and you're moving up, the women on your job going to know about it because women talk. That's, that's how the world works. So whatever profession you're in, if you're moving up, the women already know. So, the, but like I said, you don't want to get to another, you, you're cool with being the average male. That's what you're cool with being. You don't want to be challenged on how much money you bring in per year. You want to figure out how can I get the women that I feel that are extremely desirable with no money? How can I be a low budget trick? And I aspire to be an elite trick, but I don't want to do the work of elite trick. So how can I do elite trick and what I perceive to be elite trick on a low budget? Let me, maybe let me take a trip to Colombia or Brazil. Right. And spend all that money to have sex for 15 minutes. OK, we're going to go into the next project. So this is where this future is going, right? One, it's not based on manhood. It's not based on being a man. It's red pill, blue pill, purple pill, fuchsia pill. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or, you know, whatever pill, it's not based on being a man. And I said it, right? And when I'm dealing with a lot of these dudes out of these communities, they act like children. I had a guy in the, in the comments of this particular post, the dude went to my YouTube page. He says, you got a bunch of videos on finance, but your best videos, you talking about another man. This is the mentality of these guys. First, that video was titled a certain way. That video also was talking about finance, but he didn't watch the video. But I want you to understand something. He's playing. See, in their world, is the, everything is the Internet. It's not real life. Everything with these guys is the Internet. So they think I'm playing the game of video views as validation. I had to explain to him. I was somebody in the real world. I was, I was somebody in the real world as a teenager. I was somebody in the real world in my early 20s. I literally drove all across the Southeast to build a name for not only myself, but the people that I was representing in the real world. So I didn't jump on the internet and try to figure out how can I get views as validation. That was never, that was never an issue for me. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I'm on the internet for a whole nother reason than that. So I'm not playing the views equals validation game. And I want people to understand when you're looking at my YouTube page and you're looking at how a particular video that might have the name of a person that may be really popular on YouTube and that has more views than videos that are directly dealing with finance, right? That's an indictment of the audience, not of me. It's not a me because it's been offered to him because that same person that that particular video was titled about. I've been to their YouTube page. They have videos on their page that are talking about business that are doing essentially business pitch competitions in which they breaking down people's business model, yada, yada, yada. And those videos have less views than the videos in which they're talking about other things. And that's not an indictment of the video creator. That is an indictment of an audience. Because the audience is a bunch of people who are content, right? Many of them are content.
to be the average guy making 40 grand a year and let me figure out, instead of me figuring out how I can make an extra $20,000 this year, let me figure out how I can trick the way I want to trick on this little bit of money. Let me figure that out. Because that's more desirable to me. Right? That's more desirable to me. Because I really want to be a better trick. I don't really want to make more money. And I'm mad that women won't allow me to be the trick I want to be on a little bit of money. They supposed to accept because they making 40,000. I'm making 40,000. So they should just accept that. And then, you know, they should lower themselves. Let me get into this because I almost forgot about it. What this really is, really, is just another form of liberalism. This is what, what these guys are being fed is Western, Western European, Anglo-European liberalism promoted as some type of dating course it's liberalism because you're taking a group of people you're telling them that they're oppressed and it, it, what's what's interesting is this 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 whole lane started with white men anglo-saxon men you're taking anglo-saxon men and telling them that they're oppressed then it moved over to black people because you know black people late to everything so we got a group of anglo-saxon men who believed that they was oppressed and why are they oppressed because of women so you got a group, you're telling them that they're oppressed and here's the people that are oppressing you. Now, instead of us giving you solutions to your oppression, to where you can actually become competitive because you're in a competitive, America's a very competitive environment. Instead of us giving you solutions so you can become more competitive, what we're going to do is tell the group of people that we think that are oppressing you they need to come down to where you're at. That's liberalism. And here's how we're going to show you how to communicate to that particular group that they should come down to where you're at. That's liberalism. Then it moves to black people. Well, you're oppressed. You're an oppressed group because you're a black male, right? That's it's, it's a template they're running. And the woman is the reason why you're oppressed. Feminism is the reason why you're oppressed. That's the reason why you make 40 grand a year because of the woman, because of feminism. And instead of us teaching you skills to make you more competitive, instead of us upskilling you, teaching you how to be more competitive in this environment, what we're going to teach you is how to communicate to the woman that she should come down to where you're at. This is liberalism. These guys don't realize this is what you're being fed. At the end of the day, you're still not competitive in this environment. Let me explain something to you. I'm going to be real with you. If you think that you can't make it in this country because it's too competitive, you need to go somewhere else on a planet where you think you can make it. You need to get there. And I'm not one of them people that tell you if you don't like America, you need to leave. I don't believe in telling people that because your ancestors built this country. So if you don't like some of the things that's going on in America, you got a right to stay here and try to change it. But I'm really being real with you. If you do not believe that you can be competitive in this environment, you need to leave and go somewhere that you think it might be less competitive. Now, you may have to deal with a lower standing of living, but you won't have to deal with the level of competition in this environment. Every place is not a good place. As, uh, uh, as an economist had talked about people going to colleges and that college being a bad fit for that person. And he explained that you could have been a really, really good student and a really top student at another college, right? But you was allowed to come to this college and you were a bad fit for this school. And so for some of y'all, you may be a bad fit for the American economy, but many of you are only leaving America to go to another country to trick. You're not leaving there to do better as a person. You're going over there to figure out how to trick on a low budget. And why not go to that particular country and figure out how can I make myself successful over here because it's less competitive income wise than America? Because I, I'm being real with you. I make enough money in what I do to if I was to move to Colombia, I could really live a higher standing of living because the cost of living in Colombia is so low. I'm not going to Colombia to trick. I'm here to tell you, I, I work out at a certain part of my city, all them same Latino women. That y'all think y'all like work out of my gym. It ain't none to me, bro. That's just another woman to me. I, like I say, it ain't none to me, dog. 
right? That's just another, all them same Latino women that y'all just crying and dying over. Y'all taking, you know, 3,000 mile flights to go see. To spend a hot 15 minutes with. They work out at the same gym I work out at. They just regularly, when you, when you really see them, when you see them up close that much day in and day out, they just regular women to you, bro. They just, re they just regular chicks. They all look the same to me. They all got the same hairstyle. They all wear the same outfit. It, they just look the same to me. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So that's what I want y'all to understand. You may need to leave the country. But this liberalism that has been sold to you, that you are an impressed group, is everybody else's fault. Right? It's this group's fault of your condition. And instead of you being upskilled to become more competitive, instead of you being upskilled, you want everybody else to come down to where you're at. That's liberalism. I keep telling you, I built my trading course based on you and football. When we in the state of Florida decided that we was going to build football players, we are going to build football players and we're going to create a certain archetype of a football player. Right. What we did not tell the rest of the country is they got to bring their football programs down. We didn't do that. We said we're going to attack other people's football programs. We're going to compete at a very high level. We're not going to uh, apologize for the level and the ferocity and the intensity at which we compete. We're going to bring ourselves up. And we did that in a relatively short amount of time. And I'm from a state that the whole country recruits for football players. They still recruit Texas. They still recruit Cali. They still recruit Louisiana. But the whole country recruits the state of Florida. Every top program in this country got Florida players on their program. Why? Because of the kind of player that we produce. Because we did not say we want the rest of the country to come down to us. Because they got a head start by 20 years. What do we say? We're going to get our players to another level. And make a player so desirable that everybody wants that kind of player. Which is what we got in the state of Florida. So I don't create them kind of programs for people. I'm going to show you how to get better at what you're doing. I'm going to show you how to become more competitive. We're not going to tell nobody to come down to us. We're going to come up to where they at. We're going to kick the door in and we're going to start slapping people. And if you got a problem with it, then do something. That's what I produce. We ain't, we not asking nobody to, to take it easy on us. No, we're going to come the same way y'all coming. One thing I learned in sports is if you just play extremely hard, you'll wear most people down over the course of a game. Just go extremely hard at those people. You don't ask nobody to take it easy on you because they're not doing you a favor by taking it easy on you, right? And they're not going to take it easy on you. So if you want to learn how to compete at a high level, you're not, you're, not, uh, you're not doing yourself a favor by asking somebody to come down to where you're at. So all these average males that want everybody else to come down to them, you bought into liberalism and it's not going to work because it doesn't work. Because nobody's going to do that. They're going to just keep riding on you, which is what they're supposed to do. They're going to keep riding on you. I'm not coming down for you. And I wouldn't tell none of the women in my family to come down for y'all. Ride on these dudes. They soft. They ice cream. They cookies and cream. Ride on them. Get them out of here. Push them off the map. Take them off the board because they ain't built for this. They're not built to exist in this habitat. Get them out of here. So y'all can corral around each other on the internet and wait for somebody to give you a handout. But I'm producing people and I'm going to condition my people to get y'all out of here. Because you ain't built for it, dog. And you built to take a second position in this society. And like I told you, if you don't think you can make it, go to another part of the world where things going to be easier on you. Because you might not be built for this habitat. Right? That's how the game go. Let's get into the future. And you're going to understand a lot more why I'm saying I was reading an article this morning. Every morning I wake up, I check the markets. What's going on? Right? There was an article about there's a labor shortage inside the United States. It doesn't mean there's less people to work. There's really more people than we need. But the problem is because of COVID, they've pushed people into certain areas of the economy. And they need people back in other sectors of the economy now to do certain work. Well, why do we need this? Because one, people have been given a lot of support because of COVID. So their attitude is that these certain jobs and certain sectors of the economy, I'm not going to go take that job and don't pay enough for me to go do that. So these particular sectors now are short of people. This has now become an issue where now they're going to start getting a lot of politicians involved because these business sectors, they got lobbyists, they donate to politicians. They're going to start telling these politicians, get these people to come back to work. The reason why COVID caught a lot of these businesses flat footed 
is because they haven't had the ability to automate everything yet. They're going to get everybody back to work. And then what they're going to do is spend a lot of capital expenditure in automation. Right. That's what they're going to do. And then they're going to automate everybody out of their job. In the next 10 years, millions of people are going to lose their job because of automation. Millions. This is why we're telling you. This is why we're telling you that this 40K and this 50K that you're making is not going to be enough money for you. It's not going to be enough. So they're going to automate literally millions of people out of their job. And you know what? They're never going to get a job back in this economy. They're going to be unemployed the rest of their life. And it's not an age thing. They're going to automate 25 year olds out of their job and they will be unemployed the rest of their life. Unless they do something and nobody is going to come down to where they're at to help them. They're going to have to figure out either accept lifetime unemployment or upskill yourself or leave the country. That could be another solution to you. Right. You see people coming from other parts of the world to come to America to work. Why? Because they realize if I stay here, nothing's going to change for me. So I got to go somewhere else. But in America, we've taught people that the solution is everybody else supposed to come down to where you're at. Don't work that way. And it's not going to work that way. Right. So that's where this economy is headed. Now, as a result of having all these millions of people unemployed in my forecasting and my modeling, you're going to get two results. The first result is what that guy Chin was talking about that ran for president not too long ago was what they call a universal basic income. That could be a thing. I used to work with a woman from France. Um, this was like in the early 2000s. She left France because of a very, very high unemployment rate it was around 11 percent, she told me. And the fact that she got tired of taking their universal basic income. She said it wasn't enough money to live the kind of life she wanted to live. She left France and she came to America, married this American dude. She worked as a med tech, right? So she was able to get him. She came to America, went, went to school, educated herself and got a job as a med tech. So now she was working. She did not like living in France and taking the universal basic income. She didn't like it. She felt like it wasn't enough for her to live the life that she wanted to live. You understand me? But that's a big thing in France because the French economy cannot employ over a certain amount of people based on the way the economy is set up. So they do universal basic income. They do a lot of subsidized housing so people can just live their life. And then people get into a continuity of living like that because they just the average person in society. They get into a continuity and they build their life around that. Now, that's one solution. That's one result. The next result, in which I really believe is where they're going to go, is you're going to have another mass incarceration blitz. Now, I came up, I was a youngster, in the first mass incarceration blitz of the mid-90s. And I saw what that was about. To me, they're going to just roll that back out again. But instead of them going after young black males, they're going to go after everybody that's unemployed. Everybody that's unemployed is going to be likely to get uh, um, incarcerated. One, a lot of these people are going to be carrying a lot of debt. I think they're bringing the they're going to bring the debtors prisons back. And if you see in certain parts of the country, they're already incarcerating people for the debts that they have. They're already doing that. Right. So is it going to be universal basic income? And they're going to decide that, you know what, we're going to just pay you to be unemployed, which means that you're going to be stuck as the average male for the rest of your life. Because you're just going to keep receiving that payment and you ain't going to do nothing. And you're going to spend all your time trying to figure out how to lot of women on social media, how to, you know, trick on a low budget and get everybody else to come down to where you're at. Because these guys on the internet have told you that it's everybody else's fault where you're at. And if they just would come down to where you're at, the whole world would be better. Or they're going to just incarcerate you and lock you up because you're going to be worth more money to them incarcerated because they're going to have a job for you in an incarcerated state where they can pay you 30 cents an hour. As opposed to paying you so many dollars per hour, they're going to eliminate that surplus labor by incarcerating you and then employing you as an incarcerated person, as a prisoner. That's how they're going to solve that problem. And all these guys that sold you these courses and played this red pill, blue pill, purple pill, orange pill game with you, they're going to be off doing something else. They're going to be on to their next hustle because they actually have a business. You don't have one. They have a business. You don't have one. They got a source of income. They've had one for the past 25 years when they when this change goes about. You was cool with making $40,000 a year, arguing with people on the internet, going through their YouTube page, trying to figure out how many views they got on their channel, doxing people, putting people's addresses. This is what you was preoccupied with. None of that's going to bring money to you, but that's what you was important. Because you haven't figured out how to be a man. You're still conducting yourself like a child. You understand me? This is where you're headed. But none of these guys are going to tell you that because at this moment right now, 
they're going to keep monetizing you until they can't monetize you anymore. You understand me? So the choice is yours. You can do what you want to do. But in my opinion, this red pill thing is going to result in literally thousands of guys living on Skid Row in the next 10 to 15 years. And they're going to wish they did something else. But you know what? For all of those people that's in that community that are hearing this audio, what you can't never say is nobody didn't try to tell you. Now, you can either deal with it. You can, like I said, most of y'all are going to reject it. It's going to cause you to get angry. You're going to get mad. You're going to attack me personally. You're not going to talk about what I'm talking about because you don't have any information to dispute it because that's not what your particular community is about. Y'all spin around talking about how y'all going to trick all day. Y'all don't know how to get information, right? You're not going to do any of that. But you never will be able to say that nobody tell you. You can't say that. You feel me? So I hope you got value from this particular content. Didn't want to make it too long. In fact, this is probably the longest video I've ever done and probably will be the longest video I ever do. And the reason why I didn't do this live is because I'm very busy. I got a lot of stuff going on and I didn't feel like doing a live setup because unlike these dudes that's cool with making 40K a year, I got a lot of stuff going on. I don't have time to do half the stuff these guys got. These guys got a lot of free time. And that's why I try to get them. Y'all got too much free time to not be making enough money. Y'all got an extra four or five hours a day to go get you some money. But you spend all your time on the internet going back and forth with people, right? And trying to figure out how you're going to trick on a low budget. You understand me? Take that brain power and try to figure out how you're going to make some more money this year. You feel me? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.